All right, let's go. Hi everyone, I'm Kat from All of One Cat and welcome to part two of my wardrobe walkthrough. Uh, so for those of you who I haven't met before, I'm Katrina Walser and I am a knitting teacher and designer based in Sydney, Australia. And if you haven't actually seen the first part of this video, you probably want to go back and watch it because it'll make a lot more sense if you do. Um, I'll stick a link up to it in the corner up here uh, and then come straight back here and watch the second part. But if you have seen the first part, thank you so much for watching. Um, the response to the first video was more than I could have hoped for, I guess. I really just thought like two people were going to watch this video. Uh, and so I'm so excited about how many of you watched it and left lovely comments and things. It's been really encouraging. Um, and yeah, it's just making me excited to keep going. So at the end of the last video, we left off at the end of 2017. And I've been stacking up all of my knits again for you. Uh, and we are going to go through my wardrobe in this video from the beginning of 2018 to the end of 2020. And I'll explain at the end why I don't want to go through what I've done so far this year. So yeah, let's just go through it. And we will start with the beginning of 2018. So the first thing I have is a test knit. Uh, that I did. It's called the persimmon hat. Persimmon? I, I don't know how to pronounce that fruit. I have some persimmons in my fridge. I just don't know how to pronounce it. But anyway, this is the persimmon beanie uh, and it's by Abby who goes by more knits on Instagram. And I made it out of Malabrigo worsted. Uh, and so here we go. So Malabrigo worsted is a 10 ply yarn. Uh, and it's just this lovely like brown color. I wanted something really neutral. Um, and it was a really fun knit. It has like a lace pattern, which is surprising for a beanie. It's like surprising and sort of unexpected, but it's still very cozy and warm um, and squishy. So I'll show you what the texture looks like. So it's got these little ridges which are nice, like really nice and lovely. And that's the like the lace. I think there were some yarn overs and things in it. Um, and so yeah, it's just like, it's really sort of pretty texture. And it went really nicely with the yarn because I think the yarn's a little bit variegated. Uh, it had some little like tonal shifts to it. So I just really love this beanie. I wear it quite a bit. And I must have been on a bit of a brown kick because the next thing I have to show you is also brown. So this is a big triangle shawl. It's asymmetric, which was an accident. So I have been quite fascinated by gradients for a while. I don't know when gradients became a thing. I feel like it was maybe in sort of 2017 or so. There were so many like fade and gradient based shawls. Uh, and I was quite wary of creating my own gradients. I like, I'm not super confident in my choices of color. Um, and so I liked the idea of finding yarn that was in a gradient cake because then that way someone would have already picked the colors out for me. And so I found this at Linkraft and yeah, it was just a cake. I think it must have been cotton. So there might be a little bit of polyester in it. It's quite stretchy. so. I wouldn't be surprised if there was, but I really just wanted to try the gradient. And it's an interesting gradient cake in that uh, the yarn is made up of maybe four different strands that are all twisted together. And the way the gradient works is that um, in every section, it switches out one strand for a different color. So they introduce a strand of white in here. Uh, and then it gets more and more white in this section and then it switches browns to this like tanny color and then it gets more and more tan. So I wasn't following the pattern exactly. Once I sort of understood what the stitch pattern was, I just did it from memory. So I wasn't counting exactly how many rows that I'd done. And when I got to the fourth color change, which I assumed was the middle of the ball, I just started um, decreasing the other way. And I think my tension just must have changed. I do know that I changed needles part of the way through, and I think that like drastically changed my tension. 
because yeah the like you can just see it here so this length here is like like this and from this corner this middle bit to the corner is like all the way out here can't even get that into the shot uh so yeah it's just like dramatically different but I don't mind too much. It makes it a bit more interesting. Uh, I just usually wear it with a knot tied in this corner here, um, just to even out where the ends sit on my body. So yeah, the yarn is called Lincraft Cakes Illusion. Um, and the pattern was just the pattern that came with the yarn. Okay, so the next thing I have is a pattern of mine and it's called the Jigsaw Shawl. Um, I think this was the first shawl that I designed, pretty sure, I'd have to look it up. So if you remember from the last video, I had that whole story about the little cow, the up and down the river cow that I had and how I like saved up all my points at my local yarn store to get some fancy yarn. Um, and that had some silk in it. And after I made that, I was just obsessed with the idea of getting more silk. Um, I just like really, really loved it. I loved how shiny it was. Uh, and I just wanted something sort of blingy. So I went to Vogue Knitting Live, which is a big um, yarn convention slash marketplace in New York. And I was wandering around there, just like looking through all the booths and stuff, looking for some silk. And I finally found some. And so this is gorgeous. This is Moonbeam from Muru Yarn. And from what I remember, I think it's 50% silk and 50% merino. And it's just got this like lovely tone to it. I use it a lot for when I want to like dress something up, but still wear knits. Uh, just because it's so shiny, it's like a little blingy and so a little bit more fancy. And yeah, I wore this on our, um, my husband and I never got engagement photos done. We just never did like an engagement photo shoot. So we did a anniversary photo shoot instead. And I wore this for that and it just sort of fit into my outfit even though I was a bit more dressed up. So I love it. And it's just really lovely and pretty. The next thing I've got is also a pattern of mine. So I released this and the next um, shrug at around the same time at the start of the year. So this is the apple pie shrug. And it is a big cocoon shawl. Um, I'll show you the right side, just because the wrong side's got the ends. <laughs> okay, I never weave my ends in. I just like, don't. Especially if it's a garment that like, the ends are going to be on the inside. If it's a shawl or, or like a scarf or something, I'll weave the ends in just so you don't see them. Please tell me it's not but just me. It's so much easier to just leave them hanging. <laughs> um, so I will not show you the wrong side because there are little bits of yarn poking out everywhere. And this is in Creative Cotton uh, and it's their Aran Weight Cotton. Uh, and I just bought it from Lovecrafts. And yeah, I just really love this shrug. Uh, I literally took it, we went on holiday last week to like three days ago uh, up to the Great Barrier Reef. Uh, we went to the Whit Sundays, and yeah, this was just a great like it's it's just a great summer shawl uh, because it's cotton. Like I don't really care about it getting wet, so I can throw it on over my swimmers at the beach, and it'll dry out pretty quickly, especially because it's like lacy. And I like this one because uh, most shrugs you make a big rectangle and you fold them in half and sew up the sides. I have quite a few shrug patterns in the works. So I'm going to do a video on how to make just like a standard shrug. Um, when it's ready, I'll throw a link up in the corner. But this one, I didn't want to seam. So you knit it in a round. So that is the apple pie shrug. So the next thing I have is the Luga shawl from Lilo Phil. And this is the Twisted Sock Base from Asylum Fibers. And the colorway was called Under the Bridge and it was an exclusive color for the Brooklyn Yarn Crawl. There are four really beautiful local yarn stores in Brooklyn within about like maybe a five or 10K radius of each other. And luckily it was really close to where I lived. They had like an event every year where they would 
have each have sales and then also have like a collectible item where if you hop from store to store you could collect one of each like one of each piece of the set um that was like had the logo of the store in it so the year that i went it was these like lovely laser cut wooden stitch markers which i will show you a picture of um and i just really love them i use them all the time it's a really nice keepsake of my time in brooklyn and so this um yarn was a an exclusive colorway to yarn crawl and then the green is coop knit sock yeah which i just love saying i don't know why sock yeah um like i think i think the name actually has an exclamation mark in it and so i just really like the way that the colors and the pattern worked out with each other so these diamonds are slip stitch twisted stitches and so like they sit on top of the green background and it's just really beautiful so i finished this shawl maybe in june and i don't have anything in my wardrobe um, that I knit until like October and so there are a couple of reasons for this uh, People get like all sorts of different symptoms from pregnancy pregnancy is really weird if you've never been pregnant. It's really weird um, and One of mine was that I just like felt nauseous at the thought of knitting like looking at my stash made me feel sick which was really sad so sad um, and I don't know if it was the smell or the texture or the thought of like exerting effort but anyway so I put my needles down for a couple of months and then when I did actually start knitting again I had so many babies to knit for so obviously I had my own baby to knit for um, my so tacky no it's not it's not tacky I've been wanting to do this for a while but my pregnancy announcement was a picture of a onesie that I was knitting for her and then also all of my close friends got pregnant at around the same time i think from october of 2018 to march of 2019 there were maybe eight or nine babies who were born to friends who were close enough that i wanted to actually make something significant for them so i made maybe like six or seven baby blankets and another three or four onesies and little pairs of booties and like baby bonnets and stuff and so it means that I didn't really knit a whole lot for myself in 2018 uh, and so I've really got two things left to show you so the next thing is this jumper uh, and this is Turtle Dove by Espace Trico I'm looking skeptical because I studied French for six years and I just can't pronounce those words which is really bad <laughs> but anyway uh, that is the pattern and it's only written for one color of yarn but like I was saying earlier gradients have just like been a really big thing especially at the time and I realized that I had enough yarn to make a cool gradient and so um, my stash is really strange I will take you through my stash one of these days uh, whenever I make a video I'll pop the link up in the corner um, but my stash is really strange in that I don't tend to buy jumper quantities of yarn because I find it really hard to commit <laughs> uh, to buying that much yarn all at the same time especially if I don't have a project in mind for it but I am a sucker for buying individual balls or skeins of like really pretty colors that I like and I realized as I was planning this jumper out that I have a consistent enough color palette that it like made a nice gradient. So most of my stash is like purples and blues and grays. So the way I did the fade is that I would knit quite a, like a long chunk of one color and then to merge it into the next color I did stripes of the, um, the first color and the second color sort of striped together and that's how you get these sections of like the sort of meld so this is my Rhinebeck sweater and I'm very intentionally saying sweater there because it's a thing uh, so Rhinebeck is probably the biggest sort of like fiber based convention in the states and its proper name is the New York wool and sheep festival I think 
But everyone just calls it Rhinebeck because that's where it is. And one of the things that it's known for is people will make a jumper specifically for Rhinebeck. Um, and they call them all Rhinebeck sweaters. I was quite disorganized and I started knitting it like a week before the show. <laughs> so I didn't finish it in time to wear on all three days. Um, but I got it ready for the last day. I was just like knitting madly until all hours of the morning on the last night. But a side effect of that is that it is too short. Um, the length of the body is fine, but the length of the sleeves, this is like probably a good five centimeters shorter than I would want it to be. Um, I find that when I'm wearing it, I have to tuck the sleeves of my shirts in so that it doesn't look weird. So I am going to, at some point, um, frog this back to here and then just knit stocking stitch until it's as long as I want it to be and then I'll put the ribbing back in. But yeah, I really like it. It's like nice and oversized. It was great for when I was pregnant because I could wear it still and then it just like looks nice and sort of boxy now that I'm back down to my normal weight. And yeah, it was a lot of fun to knit. And so the last thing that I have from 2018 was um, a pattern of mine. It's called Amelia's Nursing Shawl because I just wanted to have a shawl that I could use that I could pop over myself while I was feeding her in public. And so it's Asylum Fiber again. It's on her Errant Aran base, which I'm pretty sure is uh, Merino. But I think it's super wash, which was important because I needed to be able to wash it in case it got like milk and stuff on it. So even though it's a nursing shawl, uh, obviously you can just wear it as a scarf or as a wrap. So that's actually all I have for 2018. And we will rock on to 2019. And I will show you that I somehow suddenly had enough confidence to knit with four play yarn. All right, so now we get into 2019, and again, it's a relatively small pile of knits. Um, it looks tall because this is 2019 all the way through to 2020. And there were a couple of reasons for that. Um, 2019 was a year of massive change for me and my family. Uh, we became a family for one, and then we moved back to Sydney in the middle of the year. So. Yeah, there was just a lot going on in 2019. Um, and the other thing is that somewhere along the way, I seem to have decided that I wasn't scared of four ply yarn anymore. The length of time it would take to actually knit things using four ply sort of intimidated me a bit. I just didn't want to be spending that long on one piece. But there was one piece in here which I will show you, which I just, I don't know if you guys get this. But sometimes there are things that you see that you just can't not make. Like you just have to make them. <laughs> and I find that that's usually how I get over my fear of certain techniques. I'll just like tell myself I don't like full play yarn or I don't like color work. I just won't do them. And then I'll see something that I just feel compelled to make and I just go and do it because I can't not. That's usually how I get into techniques that I didn't think I could get into. Um, and we will talk about that one in a sec. But the first piece I have to show you is definitely a hangover from the Chunky Knits. <laughs> so this is Distinction by Caitlin French. And I love it. It is, yeah, I, I love this shawl. Again, it's Malabrigo Mecca. Um, the Malabrigo guys, I just can't get over it. Uh, it's just so like shiny and saturated in this just really delightful way. And I don't know how I picked these colors, but they like feel to me like colors. I mean, obviously it's blue and purple up here, um, but I don't know how I picked this like greeny contrast color, but I quite like it. Um, I think I just wanted something that was quite different in the, in this like section. It's pretty thick um, and it's just very, very cozy for when you have just like, you just need something like a blanket, basically. It's basically like a big triangle blanket that you can wear. All right, so this is what I was talking about that I could not make. This is the Whippet Cardigan by Anka Strick. I'm, I'm almost definitely pronouncing that wrong. And I cannot do it justice holding it up like this, so I will put a picture of it 
up on the screen. And yeah, I don't know what it was about it. I just like, I saw the pattern and I just knew I had to make it. And I was debating whether to put this in the 2018 pile or the 2019 pile because I started this in June of 2018 and I didn't finish it until May of 2019. I thought that even if like as I got more and more pregnant over the summer of 2018, I thought that I'd still be able to wear it and just wear it open, but it just like clearly wasn't going to fit by sort of like August. And so I put it down, um, put it on pause because I just sort of lost the motivation to make it because I knew I wouldn't be able to wear it anytime soon. And then I picked it back up again after Amelia was born and it would actually fit me again. And yeah, it's just beautiful. It has this like great um, sort of, I think they're like, it's like a slip stitch lace here in the bottom. So it's in the bottom there. And then uh, the lace also continues on the um, sleeves. And I really like how long the ribbing is at the end. My only problem with it is that it's pilling so badly. So this is a uh, line weight from Pearl Soho. That's the name of the yarn. And um, it's a single ply. And so, okay, ply is a, a word that has two meanings in knitting. And as Australians, because we call our weights like four ply, eight ply, we don't tend to use the other meaning of the word a lot. Um, I'm planning on making a whole video on this topic because it is actually important. It's like an in interesting and like important concept to wrap your head around. But long story short for now, this is on a single ply and that is a little bit more prone to pilling, I find. And I think if I had known that at the time, um, I would have picked a different yarn. I might have a go at trying to use my gleaner on it again at some point. If anyone has any tips for that, please let me know. Like, please, please let me know in the comments because I'd really love to get this back to looking like it was when I first made it. So after that, I feel like the bow broke a bit on four ply knits because from cast on to bind off, this took almost a year. And after that, I think nothing was really that intimidating, especially because it's a whole cardigan. So I started knitting in four ply. <laughs> so this scarf is called Brooklynite and it's a pattern that I designed for my husband. It technically lives in his wardrobe, but I think I'm going to reclaim it. It is also four ply and this is, uh, this is just an entire scarf of linen stitch. So my husband doesn't love the look of traditional knitting. So I decided to design something for him that looked as little like knitting as possible. <laughs> this is what I got. And the yarn is Bella Cash from Universal Yarns. And it's quite like wide and long and just like really drapey. And so I'm probably going to steal it here and there this winter and just wear it around the place because I really like how it looks and just like how it feels. And uh, it's a free pattern, so I will put a link down below again so you can grab that if you want it. The next top I've got is probably the last thing I made before we left New York. So it has, uh, yeah, quite a bit of nostalgia attached to it. So this is uh, Lydia 2.0 by Courtney Little. And it is knit in Cotton Pure from Pearl Soho. It's designed to be cropped so it sits around your waist, but I was knitting it all the way down to my hips. Uh, I cast on for one, like for the larger size, and then I decreased up to the waist until I got to the stitch count for the like size that I actually wanted to knit from the waist up. So there's quite a bit of waist shaping here from the hips to the waist, and then it's just knit to the pattern um, from there up. And I actually, I don't know if it was like the modifications I made or if it was something different in the yarn that I used, um, but the, the armholes and the neckline and the back were just like quite a lot more open than I wanted them to be. 
So I had learned to crochet somewhere in, I don't know, actually, maybe in 2018 or so. Um, so I actually did do a bit of crochet around the armholes and the neckline just to try and keep it in together more. And that actually fixed it quite a bit. So yeah, I just really like summer knitting especially in cotton, but even in wool, if you make stuff in four ply and it's like strappy and sleeveless, it's still fine to wear. I don't really have a lot of problems. Like, you know, if it's like 32 degrees, probably don't wear your knits, especially the wool ones. Um, but if it's just like, you know, a like regular summer day, I haven't really had any issues with wearing my knitwear. So this is a design of mine that is, I haven't published it yet. Um, I'm still trying to decide what to do with it uh, because finding like, finding the yarn for it is gonna be a bit of a challenge. So I made this from a bunch of random minis and like leftover yarn that I had from knitting baby knits. It's like, a, it's surprising that this one works, but I quite like it. Like going from this sort of like gray, it goes from gray to pink and somehow in the middle there, it all works. Um, and I just really like the shaping and the straps. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to figure out how to write it up because um, I was quite worried <clears throat> about the straps stretching. And so I actually knit these sideways. Um, so they're not knit like this. I knit them like I knit a long skinny piece and then I figured out how to graft that onto the top and I think that's going to be a bit of a challenge to figure out how to write that into a pattern but whenever I figure that out I will publish the top. The last thing I have from 2019 is the Wakairo top from Aroha Knits. So Frenchie from Aroha Knits is a designer who I've admired for a really long time and I just had not gotten around to knitting anything from her and she released this top and I was just like oh I want to make that so it's this like lovely forest green color and the yarn is again something that I'm going to have issues pronouncing because I don't know any German um it's Schaschenmeier Regia <laughs> in four ply and it's a base of theirs that has some silk in it which it's not like shiny silk but it just gives it a nice sort of texture and feel. This was a really fun knit. It took a little while to get the hang of the lace panel, but I found that once I got into my head, like the direction that all the lines were running, it made it actually easy enough to memorize. And it was nice that it was just like a panel and then the rest was garter stitch. So your brain got a little bit of a break in between doing each of the like lace rows. And yeah. So I think this was the first thing that I finished after we got home and it was a great thing to have uh, just in time for summer in Sydney. And so that's everything that I have from 2019 and so next up we will do 2020. So the knits that I still have for myself from 2020 um, are a really strange grab bag of things. I feel like I got weirdly experimental last year, uh, which feels appropriate for 2020. <laughs> like, who knows what any of us were doing last year? Did last year even exist? So the first thing that I have is Sidewinder, which is a design that I wrote for Knit Picks. And this is knit in their Wool of the Andes Superwash, which is a... I think I did it in the bulky so it's a 12 ply yarn um, and I really like this one because it's really interesting um, the way you knit it is that you essentially knit a headband this um, cable panel down here you knit a long thin strip flat and then you sew it up at the back and then just to turn it into a beanie you pick up around the edge of the cable panel and you knit upwards in the round and then it's just a regular beanie from that point on. And this was the first time I was published in a book which actually the book's over here one sec. So this was in a book which is really cool 
this is what the this is essentially what the pattern looks like and I really love it so um, I will check a link to where you can find it uh, you can buy it either in the book or just as like an individual download and yeah I'm just really proud of this one so the next piece I have is the Fujiyama Mama Bolero another fun one to say by Poison Girls this was a fun one to make um, I used to think boleros were weird <laughs> I was like why do you want a tiny jacket but I found that it's really good for just chucking on over um, strappy tops and the stitch pattern is really cool they're these like sort of lacy flowers and the pattern doesn't actually call for the stripes but I really wanted to use this blue uh, it was a yarn that I picked up from Rhinebeck that is a bit of a mystery I don't know what it was I forgot to um, keep the tag but Based on the size that I wanted to make and the estimated yardage in the pattern, I didn't think that I'd have enough. So I folded in this purple, which is Madeline Tosh Merino DK. It was just like the perfect amount. I had the tiniest amount of the blue left over for the edging, but it worked out perfectly. And yeah, it's just like this nice open cardigan that you can wear when it gets warm. So the next piece was Adventures Out There, which is a bag. It's this little tote bag, and I wanted to make it for the summer. And this was knit, uh, this was designed for Knit Crate, who are a subscription box in the States, but they ship internationally. Um, and like, I've always been a little skeptical of subscription boxes, because I'm really bad with surprises. Like, I don't like not knowing what I'm going to get. And the whole point of a subscription box is that you just get surprise yarns every month. And so you get the box and it comes with yarn and a pattern that you can make with that yarn. And so this is Audine Walls Interlock, which was a really interesting yarn. The yarn is like part cotton and part a bunch of other things, none of which are wool, I don't think. And so it felt like it would make for a good sort of like beach bag. That would dry quickly and so yeah I just really love this bag the the yarn was really cool like when I first pulled it out I thought it was going to be really strange to work with but I, it was delightful uh, I was just really surprising in how much I liked it so like I was saying I have personally always been a bit scared to sign up to subscription boxes but based on all of the yarn that Knit Crate has sent me um, I'd be tempted to actually like sign up for it myself because the yarn's all been lovely. Um, if you do want to sign up, I do have a discount code uh, and they ship all over the world. And so there's a link down in the description box if you're interested in checking it out. Um, so the next thing I have is also a pattern I wrote for Knit Crate. And this is in Mrs. Crosby Wonderlust, which is a maybe a 12 or a 14 ply it's quite chunky um, and they again wanted an accessory that wasn't this time specifically wasn't a shawl and so I racked my brain for a while and I realized that I just wanted boots <laughs> so uh, these are called the couch boots and it's I mostly made them because I like live in my Uggs in the winter but I was getting frustrated that I had to take them off to sit on the couch because I didn't want to like have my boots on the couch so I made these so I didn't have to keep changing in and out of my footwear um, and yeah I really like these actually the construction is really interesting it's it's sort of hard to explain but it's entirely custom fit to the length of your foot um, and it's a really fun quick knit because the yarn's so chunky and I really like this color uh, it's mostly neutral and brown, but it has these cool pops of purple. Um, which I'm never going to say no to random bits of purple in my yarn. And yeah, so those are the couch boots. Okay, so the next set that I have, these two are a set. This is the Ribble Bralette and the Ribble Butt Shorts by Jessie May. And the yarn is mostly... Primrose yarn sport 
uh, with a tiny bit of Universal Bella Cash down at the bottom because I ran out of yarn. So this was an interesting knit. Um, there was a lot of frogging, probably almost some tears. I definitely jumped on the bandwagon with this one. So I don't know if many of you are on Instagram much, but this was like the thing to make uh, maybe in like some, oh, not summer, maybe in like winter of last year, Australian winter. So like August, September-ish, I think. Just everyone seemed to be making it. And so I definitely got sucked in by a trend. Um, and I had been sitting on this yarn for a really long time. So if you look at it, it was this color at the top and then this like lighter brown and then the darker brown down here. And then there's like a very, very dark brown at the bottom, which is the Universal Bella Cash. Um, and I think the pattern, I don't actually know what the pattern calls for in terms of weight. I think maybe it wants it to be DK. Sorry, DK is eight ply. And I ended up holding two five ply yarns together because that's what the Primrose Yarn Co was. And I just like really, really wanted to use it to make this. And I think I was just a little over ambitious. There was just like, there was a gradient. I was holding it together instead of using one yarn like it suggested in the pattern. And I think my gauge was a bit off because of that. And so I do really like the top. The top's held up quite a bit. I made a lot of modifications to it uh, to get it to fit right. And, but the shorts have just like stretched out a bit too much over time. I. I can't bring myself to frog it, given how much effort it took. Um, and I did make them to wear them as pajamas. So it's not a big deal that it stretched out that much. And so yeah, I'm definitely not modeling this one for you. <laughs> because no one wants to see that, or at least I don't want to show it. But it was an interesting knit, it was a good learning experience. Okay, the next piece I have is, oh my gosh, guys. I just cannot get over this jumper. And weirdly enough, I haven't posted any pictures of it. But this is Stone Cutter by Michelle Wang. Look at it. Like, can we all just admire that for a sec? So, uh, like I said, I love cables. Like, I'm quite obsessed with cables. And I had just like never made a massively cabled jumper. And I just got it in my head that I wanted to make a huge cable jumper. And so this definitely fits the bill. <laughs> uh, so this was knit in Morris and Sons Norway, which is a 10 ply. Um, well, at least I think it comes in different weights, but I knitted in 10 ply. And just between the yarn, yeah, the yarn just worked out really well for the pattern. The stitch definition is just intense and it's just gorgeous and okay I'm gonna admit it took me a while I wanted to have it ready for winter last year so I think I started it maybe in May of 2020 and I didn't finish it till like December so I'm still quite obsessed with it because I've only really gotten to wear it in the last like month or so and it is so much fun it's so heavy though this was like 900 grams of yarn so it's definitely weighty like it feels heavy as you wear it but I don't care because I love it so here it is this is my yeah guys I just love this okay and uh, the next piece I have to show you is the hold me close top from life is cozy um, so Xenia is a designer who just, like she, if you haven't seen her Instagram feed, you should just go check out her Instagram feed because it's beautiful. And there's no way that I can show you what this looks like because it's a wrap top and it's just weird. Isn't that weird? Anyway, um, it's weird when it's not on. So I will show you some pictures. And yeah, this was a fun one to knit. So it's knit with Rowan Softjack DK, 
which is a cotton yak and nylon blend. So I was very, very careful with my yarn choice for this one because um, if you look at the picture that she initially posted on Instagram, it just had this very specific look to it. And I knew that substituting was going to be quite difficult. I think she knit it with, I don't know what the main yarn is, but there was definitely a strand of mohair held together with it. I don't even remember how I ended up deciding on this this yarn. I just remember that it took a really long time deciding. But I needed to get a hurry on because it was a test knit. And I, <laughs> I think I knit this in three days, maybe four. I just left it way too late. And yeah, I've been wearing this heaps over the summer. It's like one of those things that it's surprising that it's handmade. Once you put it on, it just looks like very just, I think the word I'm looking for is refined. It looks very refined and it's lovely. And that's it. That is the bottom of the pile. But I do have one final thing I want to show you. So, this is probably the oldest thing that I still have in my wardrobe. Um, I was like tossing up whether or not to show these. Ever since I started Old Font Cat, my sort of tagline has been not your Nana's knits because I just like, I've always loved the idea of having knitwear and designing patterns that were just like more modern. And I feel like padded hangers are the most Nana-ish thing that you can make. <laughs> but um, this is how I learned how to knit. And I still have a bunch of them in my wardrobe. Uh, I find that they're just like great for knits because they're padded. They don't um, hurt the shoulders when you hang things up. I mostly use them as a way of experimenting with new stitches and new stitch techniques because they are just a big rectangle that you sew over the hanger. Um, so I'll probably make a video on how to make these at some point because I really do think they are the perfect beginners project for quite a few different reasons. So yeah, make some padded hangers, they're fun. And that is actually all that I have. Um, I am going to stop here because everything that I've made in 2021, it's a long story, but I actually don't have a lot of it. I do think I'll do this annually though. So it's, it's just been like a really fun way of looking back over everything that I've made. And so I hope that it was enjoyable for you too, and that you maybe learned some things along the way, or at least had something fun to watch while you were knitting. If you do want to see more from me, uh, make sure to like this video because it helps other people find it and also subscribe. Um, subscribing to the channel is probably the easiest way to keep up with when I release new videos, but they will be coming out every Thursday at 7.30 Sydney time. If you subscribe, you should, it'll show up in your home feed on YouTube. Um, otherwise, if you want to follow me on Instagram, I am at olifoncat and there's also a link in the bar description box down below where you can sign up for my newsletter. Um, and so I will see you back here next Thursday, but until then, happy knitting. Mm -hmm.